Hello, my name is Alex Bankier. I am deputy editor of the journal Radiology, responsible for thoracic imaging. For today's podcast, we welcome Dr. Simmons and Dr. Pur Mortesa, both from the NIH in Bethesda. And we are discussing today their article, their technical development, uh, feasibility of those reduced chest CT using photon counting detectors, initial human results. Dr. Simmons, let's start with you. Could you give to our readers a brief explanation, a brief description of this technical innovation and explain in what this new detector technology is incrementally different from previous technologies? Uh, certainly. Um, so, photon counting detectors use semiconductors to directly convert incoming X ray photons into an electric signal. And the pulse height of that electric signal is proportional to the photon energy. Um, high speed applications um, specific circuits then integrate the signal, they count all the pulses and measure their energy, and they can then divide the multiple X ray photons into different bins based on their uh, energy. This approach is can then effectively eliminate electronic noise, which as we all know is a very important uh, contributor to noise in low dose studies, such as those reduced chest CT. Um, all currently commercially available CT scanners use energy integrating detector, where the um, X-ray photon indirectly is converted into an electric signal, which leads to a combination of multiple um, photons into one intensity value and a loss of this uh, spectral information and a retention of the electronic noise in the, uh, in the signal. I see. Dr. Pur Mortesa, uh, you showed that uh, this new technology has the ability to reduce those, to reduce noise. Are there other practical implications of this technical innovation? Oh, uh, first of all, uh, thanks for inviting us. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, yes, so the way we, when we think about photon counting detectors, as Dr. Simos just mentioned, uh, one of the aspects is the rejection of electronic noise. But there are also other advantages. Uh, specifically in this paper, we focused on the rejection of electronic noise, but there's also the spectral information or the energy information of photons that could be used uh, specifically to separate or discriminate uh, different materials. And uh, also another aspect of, uh, of photon counting detectors that is very important, uh, there is no scintillating crystal. Uh, so the, the step where uh, we go from detecting X-ray into light photons into an electric signal, the light photons are removed. There's no, uh, there's no intermediate step. So that uh, adds uh, two important things. Number one is that because we don't have that intermediate step, uh, some uh, photon statistic is now better preserved. So not only electronic noise, but the actual Poisson noise or the quantum noise of the system is better preserved. There are lots of studies on it based on uh, cascaded uh, system modeling of, of photon counting detectors. So that's one aspect. So if we choose to do model-based reconstructions, we will have a better behaving uh, signal compared mm -hmm. to energy integrating uh, detectors. I see. And number two is that because we don't have the, uh, these uh, scintillating crystals, we can make the pixel sizes of the detector uh, much, much smaller. The size of the detector pixels have been limited to about a millimeter. And with photon counting detectors, we can reduce that. I mean, there will be some nonlinearities and other effects that are produced, but we can reduce the size to a quarter or half of a millimeter. Mm -hmm. So this whole, this whole um, um, interface and interaction between resolution, noise, and so forth is, of course, for particular uh, of particular interest for uh, thoracic images, for lung images, you have uh, applied this new technology to pulmonary nodules, which are, per definition, uh, high contrast structures. Do you anticipate that uh, the technique will provide equally good results with uh, more diffuse changes in the lung parenchyma uh, that are, uh, per definition, of lower contrast? So I'll, I'll, I'll start with something and then I will let uh, Dr. Simons answer the rest of it. But before this paper, we actually did a extensive phantom study and the phantom study was focused on more diffuse type of uh, 
uh, nodules, like ground glass nodules. And actually the performance that we, uh, we, uh, we observed was better for photon counting CT, even better than what we, uh, we saw in the, in the clinical studies. Of course, it was a phantom and you know, a well-shaped phantom. So we expected the results to be better. But uh, the, that uh, initial study made us confident that uh, we could move forward and do these human studies and expect similar results. But uh, I mean, uh, uh, Rolf, would you like to add something to that? I, I completely agree. In, in that phantom study, we saw that also for low contrast structures like ground glass, there was a clear advantage of using photon counting technology. Another uh, advantage of the photon counting technology is that we see that the Hounds field stability uh, is better preserved, uh, probably related to the, the lower electronic noise. Um, so repetitive follow-up scans and measurements of Hounsfield units, uh, which is important to follow up of certain diseases such as uh, lung fibrosis, are more reliable at low dose with uh, photon counting detector technology. So I think that also in that regard, uh, for low contrast changes or discrete changes in Hounsfield units, photon counting technology has certain potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think this uh, this um, stability issue of Hounsfield units and of attenuation measurements is of is of uh, big importance. Uh, notably, with with uh, with these rapidly evolving uh, iterative reconstructions technologies that are that are currently used, you call uh, you call your paper initial human results. Obviously, we are uh, quite early in this uh, development. What are the next steps uh, that are needed to validate this technology? And uh, my second question would be, uh, what is the time course, what is the, what is the path in the future until this technology will become part of a routine, uh, of routine imaging? So, uh, now as we know, this is a prototype system. The purpose of uh, using the scanner is to answer this main question that, do we even want to move uh, from uh, energy integrating detectors or the current technology into the next generation? It brings to my mind, uh, you know, the time where we were going from analog cameras into digital cameras and small webcams. So the first step, the, the first uh, challenge right now is a mass production of, uh, of these photon counting detectors. These detectors have been around for a very long time. They were developed at CERN and, uh, uh, the challenge that we have in uh, CT diagnostic CT is that uh, the photon count rate is so high, so we had to wait for certain advances in electronics and uh, for better, uh, you know, faster uh, electrical circuits. And now we're at a step that uh, we have uh, very viable prototypes and very uh, uh, stable prototypes that can operate in room temperature and does not have a lot of the Nonlinearities are, are problems of older detectors. Uh, I think, uh, in terms of is this a, a viable technology? Uh, that was the purpose of this paper and a couple of other papers I've been working on. And um, I do believe it answers the initial question that at least uh, with photon counting detectors, we're not losing it. We're move, uh, uh, it shows the, the non inferiority of photon counting detectors. And in addition, we're seeing that uh, we have benefits in terms of noise and radiation and spatial resolution and contrast. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next steps would be, I think, uh, uh, to further develop this technology uh, in terms of uh, its, its stability and its mass production and moving it, uh, combining this technology with uh, more advanced uh, reconstruction algorithms and more advanced uh, you know, uh, CT, uh, uh, CT algorithms, for example, flying focal spots using smaller focal, spot, uh, focal spots. And uh, the, current, uh, the current scanner that we work with uh, has a limited field of view, mainly because it's a prototype. So it'd be advantageous to uh, use a larger field of view scan. I see. Uh, Dr. Simons, do you want to add to that? Uh, well, I think the, from the, the technical aspect has already been elucidated. Uh, I think there is definitely a potential and we've shown it in, in volunteers. But now, of course, the question remains whether this uh, better long nodule CNR, this lower image noise actually translates to better outcomes and better diagnosis in patients. So I think large scale clinical trials, of course, will be necessary to further validate our approach. But I think 
indeed, as my, my colleague Dr. Paul Martez already said, I think the potential of the technology has been shown in these volunteers and it provides the rationale for the further development of this technology and for the implementation of this technology for larger uh, prospective clinical trials. I see. Okay, so uh, I really believe this is a very promising technique. We are looking forward to hearing uh, from your group, from other groups, uh, about the next incremental steps and implementation uh, steps of uh, this technology. And with this, I would like to thank both of you for participating, and thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.